morning guys, great to see you all again. Yeah, I'm tired too. We haven't seen Pebbles for a bit. This isn't gonna work, is it? Okay, let me just, one second. That was never gonna work, was it? Okay, I'm gonna definitely gonna do a shoot with Pebbles. So, in a couple of weeks, Pebbles will be there. Okay, so, I've got quite a lot to go through in this week. First of all, 50,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. We've just done so well to get 50,000 subscribers on this channel. I really can't believe it. And there's gonna be a giveaway at the end of the video, so wait, wait around till then to see the details of the giveaway. It's, it's really good, I've got some good stuff to give away. Before I get onto the video about stitching, which is today's video really, and show you some more footage from the amazing Faroe Islands, I just wanted to revisit these two images. Um, just let me get it. Where's it gone? Oh. Okay, here it is, I found it. So, if you remember, I, talk, I talked about bird or man, um, and which you preferred, and which, you, which would sell best, really. But what was really interesting is, I thought this one would sell best, but I've had so many comments, and so many people get in contact with me and say that they buy the person with, with me in it, basically, um, which is really flattering, I can't believe it. So, I thought I'd do a little bit of an experiment this week. So I'm gonna offer both of these images for sale, and I just wanted to say something about that, because it, it doesn't just support my channel, but it means quite a lot to me when people buy my images. Yeah, there's the money element of it, and that's great. You know, I, I, obviously I need that to, to be able to run this channel, and it's great that everybody wants to support me. But it, it's more than that. It's just such a great feeling to have somebody get your images and put them up on the wall. Um, so, and it's a great way of me sort of being more in touch with my audience as well and you guys, because at the moment I'm just stuck talking to a camera. So when somebody actually buys one of my photos, you know, all the care and attention that goes in that, and I know somebody's gonna unpack it and get it framed and put it at a pride of place on their wall, it really does mean a lot to me. So I just wanted to mention that. I think that it's not just about the money, it is more about that, that feeling element as well. So yeah, I put both of them up for sale. I'm then gonna tally up all the comments of what people like and what people prefer and then and then we'll we'll measure what sells most as well and I'll feed that back to you because I think it'll be a really interesting experiment. I think it's quite a popular image so I think we should get quite a lot of stats on that. And yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you next week or, or maybe the week after on that. The link to buy it is in the description um, below. Um, obviously don't feel, only buy it if you like it, obviously. Uh, the details are below and I've reduced the price a little bit. I know not everybody can afford my print, so hopefully that'll help to celebrate the 50K subs as well and give a little bit back. Um, okay, I will stop blabbering on about these two images now and let's get to the Faroe Islands and talk a little bit more about stitching and my broken lens. So this is a big hike. We're going up this big mountain in front of me here to try and get sunset. It's gonna be the first sunset that I've shot since I arrived here. And we're staying in this amazing little village with a colorful roofs behind me. And you can see all the mountains in these fjords look like they are behind me. And it is so spectacular, but it's gonna be a fairly grueling hike up. And hopefully we're gonna get some golden sun. So we finally made it to a great location on the side of this mountain and you can see we're at quite an incline so we just have to be careful about where we position things. It's always good to be safe when you're on a mountain like this and not take anything for granted. And what I've done is I've looked at photo pills and the augmented reality app, and it's really helpful so you can see in your landscape. So if I just look over here now, I can see that the sun is gonna track down just, and it's gonna stay on the foreground here and track down just over those mountains behind me. So I'm not gonna get the sun set in, I'm not gonna see the sun set, but the, the light that the sun creates is gonna be magnificent on the mountains there. Now, the big problem I've got is 
that I broke my wide angle lens. So it nearly fell off the end of a big cliff. I, my tripod fell over. For anybody who watches the channel, I've done it once before and not broken anything, but this time the lens um, completely um, broke and, and, and dismounted from the camera. So I couldn't, I couldn't mend it, unfortunately. Now, a fellow photographer, Thomas, who lives here, and I'll link his Instagram below, lended me his Nikon um, camera with a wide angle lens, which is so kind of him. And I'm gonna take some shots with that, but what I'm also gonna do, and what I've been experimenting with, is actually using my 35 millimeter on my X-T2, which is equivalent to 50 millimeter, and stitching the images together to get a really high megapixel shot. So I'm gonna also do that now in, in, in this location, and I think when it's sunset, we should get something really special. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna just scout the area a little bit and then I'll be ready for when the sun sets and hopefully we're gonna get something amazing. Okay, so as you can probably see over there, there's not any light on any of the mountains, which may mean that we're not gonna get a sunset. So we've hiked all the way up here and we're not gonna get that golden light. Now we had some good light just before and I took a photo, which I'll show you in a minute, which was good, but not amazing. But what I did want to do is show you how um, to do a panoramic. And I'm gonna do a panoramic here because it's the best composition for this particular location. There's not great foreground here. So, but it's a real vast, view that, that we've got and and for the peripheral vision that we've got in, our, in with our site then then it just it, it's just a really great scene and i will show you some photos that i took earlier in the week which were stitched together but i will show you some photos that i took earlier in the week which were eight photos that i stitched together and there was four at the top and then four below it and it made probably around about 140 megapixel image so Again, I'll show you that after I've taken this shot. Okay, so the, the most important thing when you're doing this is that your tripod is level. So I've got it leveled on my tripod here. And when you've got it leveled, you then make sure that everything is tight, apart from the ability to swivel it around like this. Now, the other thing that I've got level, on my screen here, it shows me whether it's level and green is level. So now I've got the camera level I've got the tripod level, so as I rotate around, then everything stays in the same position. And a good way to check that is go around 180 degrees and check that your horizon level on your camera is the same distance above the actual horizon at this point and at the point over there. So then I basically set it on bracketing. So I've got, I'm bracketing three photos, so at each position, I will take three photos. So I'll take one shot here, then I'll move it 50% of the way through the image, take another, and then I'll continue to do that all the way around, and it will produce a fantastic image. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. So I'm back in my studio now and I'm just going through these images and I wanted to show you how easy it is to not just make a panoramic, but stitch loads of photos into multiple layers. So you can create really, really big, large megapixel images. And actually with a 35 millimeter lens, you can create a really wide angle of view. So if you look at this, here's, here's some photos I took uh, a little bit earlier than when I showed that video when the light was just slightly better. Um, so you can see the lights on the mountain in the background there. And I 
at each shot I did a bracket, so I bracketed three, um, three images, I think it was a third or two thirds of a stop either way. Actually, I didn't need to do that because the, the dynamic range of this image is, is, not, is not huge. Um, so, if I had needed to though, I'd just select those three like that, right click, and then I would go down to Photo Merge, HDR, and then just create a HDR of those before I then went to merge them and create a panoramic. But in this case, what I'm doing is just going through these images and then selecting, pressing nine, and tagging it as blue. So if I look at all my blue tagged images, you can now see that I've got a range of images here, um, going all the way across the scene. And all I need to do is just select them all, right click, photo merge, panorama, and then I've got some choices for the panorama. At the moment it's doing a panorama preview. Now, the preview is a good way of having a look at it before you actually go and build the, 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 the panorama itself in full resolution because that might take a little bit longer. And you've got a spherical, a cylindrical and a perspective preview. The two that I use most are cylindrical and spherical. Basically it's the way that they project these images onto either a, a sphere or a cylinder. Um, so if you're doing a long panoramic then you're better doing it on a cylinder so it unwraps and all your um, verticals are, are vertical. And if you're doing it on a, um, if, if you're doing something that's got multiple panoramas on top of each other, then most of the time you're better doing it on um, spherical. So yeah, you can see that's the image and I can then just click merge. And here's one I made earlier. So I won't go and do that now, but if you go look across here, then this is that image merged and I've cropped it as well. So if I just click the crop tool here, you can see that I've actually got quite a lot more depth in this image. Um, but I've cropped it, I felt this looked better. But you can zoom in on this, I mean this is, I think about a 70 megapixel image, and if I go and zoom in on this particular image, you can see that the detail here is so incredible. So it means that with this 24 megapixel camera, without a wide angle lens, I've been able to produce something that's pretty amazing. So let's have a look at some other images that I did. In this case, I did a vertical panorama and I stacked two next to each other. So almost like two columns next to each other. So here you can see all those images stacked next to each other. There's five on, to, on top um, of each other and then there's another column of five on top of each other. So all we need to do now is select all these images. So some of them overlap at different amounts, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you overlap by around about two fifths each image, then you get something about right. And the beauty of taking it with like a 35 millimeter lens on my X-T2, which is 50 millimeter full frame, is that, that, that it stitches so well together because you don't have many perspective changes. So I'm just gonna right click on this and Lightroom does all the work for me. So I can just go to Panorama and um, yeah, just need to Whistle and wait now. Just gonna have a bit of my coffee. Yeah, so in this case, sometimes it's a bit of trial and error. Perspective has worked the best and has created the most um, amount of detail. But I'm I can now go and merge that. And again, once I've merged that, and I've, I can go and edit it afterwards, you can get an image like this. And if again, I zoom in on this image, you can just see the level of detail. And I showed this on Instagram actually recently, but the detail in this image, I mean, you just look at that, it's just incredible. This is a 100 megapixel image. The detail in the rock is incredible. Again, I did it with another image here, this one. And again, I stitched lots of lots of images together. So this was the place that I broke my wide angle lens. I, I sort of had to do this, but I'm actually really pleased that I did because it's come up with something that's really amazing. So give it a go, try it, and I think you'll be really amazed. I hope you found that useful. It's a bit of a long tutorial this week, but it's a, such a simple trick to do in Lightroom and anything I can do to make my life more efficient, quicker to be able to process images and be able to do something in the field that allows me to do something a little bit different, it's great. Anyway, back to the 50K subscribers. So I've got two things to give away. 
First of all, I've got this amazing, it's a 24 litre backpack from Temba and they've kindly given it me to give away, so thanks a lot to them. And I've also got, surprise, surprise, some <laughs> Photospeed A3 paper, my favourite paper. And the paper that I'm actually printing these two images on as well that I spoke about at the beginning of the episode. So to win those, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You also need to subscribe to my Instagram account and comment below. And the comment can be any comment, so ideally we'll probably be commenting about people in the in, in the landscape and these two images that I showed at the beginning of the image. It could be a comment about this technique in YouTube. Have you got any other ideas, quick, quick ideas like that? But any comment, and I'll pick one of the comments at random, and yeah, there'll be two winners. Thanks ever so much for watching. Until next Sunday, bye.